Well, it's finally here. vMix 24 has been released. And in this video, I'm going to go over some of the new features found in the new vMix 24. Well, it's finally here. I've installed it on one of my systems and I thought we'll have a quick look and see what's new. One thing I'm not going to touch on in this video is the replay system. Um, there are many people out there who use replay a lot on vMix for sports. They will be better qualified to talk about that. So I'll let them do that. I'm going to look at some of the features that I think will have a bit more of an impact on the stuff that you do, especially when you're doing the virtual productions, vMix calls and things. Um, and so I thought we'll install it, we'll have a quick look and uh, see what we can find out. So let's have a look at what we've got. Um, <coughs> here is vMix 24 installed. It's vMix 24.0.0.49 uh, at the time of this video. Uh, obviously it's been out in beta for a while, so we are uh, um, coming in at 0.49. And um, let's go through some of the features that are not necessarily as well documented or talked about. Um, but one of them that is out, a simple one, is that they have added some more stingers. Twice as many stingers as we had before. So as you can see here, we used to have two stingers. We've now got four, which is great. It saves us uh, having to necessarily think about changing the source of our stingers via... Uh, various methods we can now actually have four stingers all loaded ready to go which is quite nice the other thing you can do now is you can create a stinger within the gt title designer so if you've got vmix 4k or vmix pro um, you can now create a stinger within gt title designer and i believe tim has put a video on how to do that i'll link that in the description um, so you can work out how to create a stinger within gt title designer so one of the things I think is particularly uh, important that they've added to vMix 24 is the new borders function. So as you know, when we used to create our multi-view layers, is what they used to call them, um, and we would want to have a border around a window, we would have to create that manually. We'd have a, a an input, which is a border. We'd probably put that over our source, and then that would give us some ability to have a border around that scales up and down. A uh, number of problems with that, of course, was one that as you scaled a full-size border around a full-size image to smaller, the border would start to scale down as well. So if it is 50 pixels wide or something, when you are full screen, of course, it goes down to a 25 pixel wide. And then as you get smaller, the border just plain disappears. And also, uh, if you cropped your image, you cropped your border as well. So you ended up with no border down the side. They have fixed to some degree, an awful lot of that. So uh, let's have a quick look. I'll flick back over to my vMix system. Let's go and have a look at, and we'll do this on the fly. This is not rehearsed. Um, let's go into here and have a look at this two pip border. So for example, let me just go into this typical two pip. Those uh, borders that you're seeing there are now created by uh, vMix. Um, and this is great. I'll show you how you, we can do this back into here. Let's go into the settings of this. So before we used to obviously have to have, I used to call it presenter full frame, and we used to have to switch this thing off and on here to give us a border. Uh, but we no longer have to do that. Let's, for example, take this layer. Notice they're now calling it layers. They put a little multi-view on there as well, but they're finally calling it layers, and uh, which is great. <laughs> we can now go into edit this layer here. And you'll see there's a new option called border. So that's the border around this item here. If I switch that off, as you can see, it disappears. So we can switch it on. We can change the color. For example, let's go here and let's change it to a blue. And there's our blue border. We can change the thickness. So this is 10. Let's go something nice and thick. There's a 50, I'm guessing it's pixel border. And then we have this radius, and the radius is really for giving you sort of round corners. Uh, for example, if I put a 50 in there, you can see the, cor the corner getting rounder. Uh, let's go up to 200, and there you go, you can see it's getting really round. I think you can go all the way up to 1,000, and there you go, you get some kind of oval border. I don't believe you can get a circle, but if somebody finds out how to do that, because I think if I go any more than a thousand, it's not going to make any difference. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to 1,100 just to prove. Yep, 
There we go. So I'm going to take those off and put my border back to 10, change the border back to white, which is there. There we go. So we have our white border. <coughs> and we've got uh, a border around each of these as well. So one advantage of this is that these borders will now scale. So, for example, let me show you. Uh, I've got a, this is a two screen pip that you've seen me use before, shows two of my screens and me in the bottom left hand corner. And if I go to a three pip that I've created here with me cropped, so here's, I'll try to keep myself central, here's me cropped in a window. You notice that the border around me has remained in place and is effectively cropped. Uh, let me go back to the two pip on a merge so you can see it. And there we go. Now, what you may notice, bottom left hand corner, there is me with the border around. If I go back to the three pip, when I hit this, it will disappear and come back again. So it does not scale as the video goes in and moves up and down. The, the uh, uh, border does not go with it. It will disappear until it's finished the move and then appear again. So. There we go. What I'll do, just to slow, let me slow that down. If I go into my companion here and go into this three pip, I'm just going to make that a thousand. So it's nice and slow. So let's go back to the two. So if I go, s this take a, a bit longer now, you should see it. So it disappears, appears. Yeah, go back down. Disappears and then appears. So bear that in mind when you are doing these transitions that it will not scale up and down with it during the move. However, we have borders that you can quite easily put around different crops. So it's, uh, you know, to me, that's not too much of a problem. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so that's the borders. Have a play around with it. Um, I'm, this is obviously, you know, the first time they put borders and things into this system. Uh, I've no doubt that they will tweak that as they move along. Uh, I had a look at it originally when they first did it in in 24 beta and it's very clunky and they've improved it no end all the way up to the point of release so i've no doubt there will be improvements on that as well and of course it's a simple border you know there's no options to be able to do uh, fancy borders or anything like that on it it's a simple white, white colored border uh, with rounded corners so uh, uh, it is good it is very very useful and uh, has been uh, an answer to a lot of requests that we have put in over the years. So thank you very much, vMix, for that. So another little thing that I am excited about is, let's go back to vMix. Let's go, I think I've got it under here. Here we go. So vMix calls. Here we have a vMix call. And as you can see, it's got a lovely picture of my cat, Tiggy, um, in there. Now, with vMix calls, we had uh, a quest would be great if you could somehow have uh, a call switch to a picture of, or a, you know, a typical headshot of somebody when that call was disconnected. Um, we'd like to be able to do things when that call is connected or disconnected, um, ideally from some kind of trigger. Well, guess what? They've fixed it um, and put that in here. If we click on our cog for my vMix call, go to triggers, we have now two extra triggers under here. One is on call connected and one is on call disconnected. And of course, these are triggers, so they can do multiple different things if we wanted to. And I'm sure over the next weeks and months, people will be throwing out videos about all the different things they could have um, triggered by a call connecting or disconnecting. <coughs> Very simply here, I'm showing you how uh, you can enable a headshot, for example, if somebody disconnected. So if somebody disconnected, it always basically ended up with the disconnect picture, which would be like something, you know, sort of like that or something like this. Um, or if they, you know, they had a, a connection drop, it would be or something, which is not particularly good if you're live. So it'd be nice if um, it would switch out to a headshot and you could do that with this. So here I've loaded a image, for example, of Tiggy, my cat, just here. And uh, what we can do is a simple trigger that says on call connect, switch off the multi view. And they're still calling it multi view overlay. I would like to have called it lair off. And um, 
input and which layer it is. So on this we're saying on core connect, switch off layer one on input 15. So let's have a quick look at layer one. Layer one, of course, is the picture of my cat. Uh, batch triggers, if we go to on call disconnect, uh, we want to suddenly switch that layer on. So let's have a look and let's do it and see if it works. Uh, let's go to the 2-pip. Let's go to here, vmix call. I'm just going to connect up to the call here, which is currently in preview. You can see it here with a picture of my cat because I'm not connected. Uh, and do I have the number in there? Yes, I do. I'm going to call it. I will call it and boom. There we go. We've got me connected. I'm sending the what I'm recording effectively uh, <laughs> to my camera feed of vMix call. But as you can see here, the cat has disappeared. We are getting a camera feed coming in. And let me disconnect the call and go OK. I disappear. Boom. Cat reappears. Um, we're going to have lots of fun with this one during calls. You could have it do all sorts of different things. Um, a simple thing would be when that call disconnects to, I don't know, mute it, or when it, when somebody connects, automatically unmute it. Um, so there's uh, there's loads of options on that one. And I think that and the borders for a lot of the stuff that we're doing remotely is uh, a big deal. So there's a couple of other um, smaller additions which may be of use. Let me go back to uh, my vMix system again. Uh, you will notice just under here there's now a little search icon. So if you wanted, if you have a lot of uh, inputs on here and you want to search them, we can do that. For example, if I was to click on this and type 3pip, click on OK. There we go. There's my 3pip. It will filter everything down. Uh, I would like to suddenly have a little cross here that just clears it straight away, but you have to go in here, delete it, click on OK. Um, again, so you can search for anything. So if I was looking for audio inputs, for example, there we go, there's some audio inputs. Um, I can delete that. So that's always available. You can't rename that or anything. It's just as soon as you click on it, it comes up with the search dialog box. But that's great, especially if you've got lots of different um, inputs on there and you just want to start searching them down for... Uh, pips and things like that to start working on or just the calls you can do which is very useful uh, I'm looking up here at my list okay let's have a look at settings you will notice we have a little item icon here called alerts they've added a couple of alerts in which is quite nice if you want to use them one of them is that they will display a message across this window here uh, under two circumstances. One is if the uh, UI and the volume drops below a certain, for a certain amount of time, you can have a volume drop type alert. So if there is suddenly something happened to your audio and you weren't monitoring your audio, which you should be, um, then you would get an alert. The other is uh, display an alert when fade to black is enabled. Light, I think, is pretty much alerted already because everything will be black, but you can now have a, an alert come up as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Another thing uh, which is quite a big deal and comes up quite a lot uh, recently is that we've seen people have crashes and things on vMix, which is not really a vMix issue. It's been an NDI issue. So the NDI encoder has sent some spurious signals down the NDI feed and it crashes vMix. Uh, they've given you an option to fix that now. Uh, if we go to add input and add an NDI input, you will see that we have a new option here called FEIM um, and this is effectively a fault tolerant vMix input. So if you know you've got an input that has before caused you a little bit of an issue, you can choose to select that and effectively what that will do is that will, let me just go and add this in here, uh, just do that for the sake of it. Um, what that will effectively do is uh, sort of ring fence that input in vMix so that should you have a problem with that vMix input, it will crash the input, but it's not going to crash vMix. Um, the drawback of this is it's going to use some more CPU processing power. Um, and so you need to make sure that you use it wisely. You will reduce the number of NDI inputs you have if you enable them all to have this in. 
so bear that in mind. If you are having perfectly stable system as far as NDI goes, you've never had any issues, don't bother using it. But if you're starting to have uh, the odd issue, you've got an encoder or something happens and every now and again your system crashes, stick that FEIM option on for that NDI input and that should protect vMix from crashing um, if that NDI input throws some spurious info in down the line. I think we're getting there. The other thing is on NDI is uh, they've upgraded to the latest version of NDI, which is great. So that's all cool. Um, so we get the benefits of that. Another little addition, if I go to web browser, you'll now see we've got browser version 86 of Chrome on there. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, we're getting pretty close. The other thing, and it's something that I have as yet need to get my head around, is that under, let's go to some input here. I don't know what I'm talking about. Settings. And then shortcuts. Let's just add a shortcut. We will see that we have some dynamic inputs. Ah, and something else, you can search it. So if I go dynamic, there you go. So we can search under inputs, set dynamic input. I need to get my head around this. I will do a video on it as soon as I've got my head around it. Uh, we can go into here if I set, and you can search these now, which is great. Dynamic, so there we go. We've got start, stop, uh, sorry, set dynamics, inputs and set dynamic values. I'm gonna get my head around that and I'll do a video of it and then I'll explain what it is. It looks pretty cool. Um, too early in the day for me to get my head around that now. Uh, I'll do a video on that later for you. Let's close this off. Um, just checking I haven't missed anything. I'm looking up at some notes I've got up here. Um, yep, I think that's it for now. Yep, so that's what I've come across at the moment in vMix 24. Um, as with any vMix uh, release, it does actually tend to be pretty stable. So I'm not really going to have any worries. I don't think about using this on production at the moment. They do go through a really good beta testing and let's face it it's vmix it's pretty solid um so i'm not saying go and use it on your productions but i find it stable certainly if you've got a spare machine and you can get that on go and have a play and uh, have a look at the new features in the meantime thank you for watching more videos will come out over the next few days and weeks i'm going to try and focus a bit more on some of the vmix 24 stuff as well as answer some of the questions and put some videos out that you guys have requested so again that's me, Mix 24. Thank you very much for watching.